There's been a couple of really high bandwidth DDoS attacks recently, that is a distributed denial of service attacks, where you have a high number of attackers attacking one victim, trying to overload them with bandwidth or requests. Now the figures recently were 620 gigabits a second and the other one clocking in at nearly one terabit per second. Now if you think about your home broadband, uh, that's significantly higher. I mean, what's one of the highest countries at the moment? I think it's South Korea have got uh, an average of one gigabit per second for the domestic broadband. So that's ridiculously high. Uh, I personally have 60 megabits. So <laughs> although I consider that quite reasonable, that would, consi that would completely exhaust my bandwidth. And the first one being journalist Brian Krebs, who was, let's say, coincidentally looking into DDoS attack gangs and then finds his own site under, what, 620 gig of malicious traffic. A coincidence, of course. I'm not really implying anything. So he, he was using the content delivery network, Acme. And it got to the point where Acme have held their hands up and gone, nope, we can't take this anymore. You are so on your own here. Because it was more than double what they'd previously seen. So we have a game of predator and prey in computing attacks. Now some of the earlier DDoS attacks started with trying to exhaust the network on a server. So you would send it a request, start it, and then throttle it down to the point that barely anything's getting through. So the web server's trying to hold it open like a request. So one request, not a problem, but then you try and overwhelm it with all these requests that are going nowhere so legitimate customers can no longer access a website. Now I know Linux is a bit more clever at that and it starts offloading these requests into memory. It doesn't hold them around on the network card. So that attack was pretty much wiped out. So then the attacks moved on to using NTP servers, time servers, or DNS servers, domain name servers, where a small request could be sent to the DNS or NTP servers and then a larger response be bounced back to a web server, to the victim. So you would anonymize the attack and overwhelm the victim. So that was pretty much like a couple of years or so ago now, and uh, I was involved in a case of a DNS server of one of our customers being used in this case. It wasn't tightened up properly, it wasn't secured properly, and was able to attack... Um, I know, I'm not going to name names here. So I, I knew who it was attacking, and <laughs> I told the customer to get their settings tightened down. But the current attacks are different. They're actually just legitimate requests coming from Internet of Tats device, sorry, Internet of Things devices. It was this OVH attack that mentioned uh, 152,463,000 well, compromised low-powered cameras and Internet of Things devices. I think I mentioned DVRs on another website. So some basic devices doing a legitimate request for a page. Now, how do you stop someone who's making a legitimate request to a website. That's a difficult one. The analysis from Acme stated that the attackers use a combination of SYN, GET, and POST floods. So TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, SYN packets, so this is a three-way transmission of SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, legitimate request, and this is the fundamentals of how comu computers communicate, GET and POST, HTTP get a page or HTTP post post data to a website, all legitimate methods of <laughs> communication to a web server. It was literally flooded with so many requests of legitimate traffic. So it's rather concerning that Acme washed their hands of this situation and weren't able to protect Krebs' website without affecting their other customers. Because what happens if Whitehouse.gov, or Department of Defense, or Facebook, or Apple are attacked with this high bandwidth attack. Now, I didn't just say those names for the sake of it. They're all Acme customers. So what happens if one of those gets hit? I mean, can we hit Facebook with 600 gigabit distributed denial of service attack? Can we knock Facebook offline? Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> no, I didn't just say that. Be good though, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. So... Google have stepped in and provided access to their Project Shield. And this is for free as well. So actually, I meant to mention that Krebs was getting the service from Acme pro bono. 
So yeah, Google have stepped in for free as well, and it's uh, Project Shield, protection for verified journalists and non-profit organisations. So really good of Google. So the headlines are pretty good for them. Not so good for Acme, where it's like, uh, content delivery network can't withstand attack, holds up their hands and poops their pants. Yeah, that's the headlines for Acme. Whereas you could say, hero Google steps in and protects website that's under 600 gig attack and sustains it. Wow. Positives for Google? Thumbs down for Acme, eh? <laughs> the Krebs security website is accessible now. Um, I've had a bit of a problem though, that's why I was using the web cache there. As far as the OVH attack goes, there's no real detail of who was the actual victim here. There's just a bit of information about the level of attack they received, which was significantly higher, and the devices that were being used. All these Internet of Tats devices that marketers have been pushing out and, well, let's say idiots have been going, ooh, shiny, I must have, and completely failing to protect them properly because, ha, huh, who needs to change the default password of a device? Yeah. And, well, you must access it over the Internet, so, yeah, let's open a few ports in the firewall. Yeah, got to do that. Yeah, that's the biggest problem here. And unfortunately, it's so easy to find these unsecured devices with the likes of Shodan. It is the Google search engine for finding unsecured devices. Yeah, nothing to do with Google. I'm just saying it's as simple as Google. Scarily simple. Just using Shodan, I've gone onto people's NASes and you get right into the system where you can like get to the point of deleting their files or copying files off. It's so easy. And unfortunately, too many people are oblivious to the dangers. Well, that was a look at the escalating war on DDoS attacks. Thanks for watching. See you all later.